podcast you cheer for. Sneaker, sneaker, business, it's all. It's all. And welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast you cheer for, the Soul Material Podcast. I'm your man, the OGE Up. I'm T. Mark, the Street Shark. We're here. Yes, sir. And we are here to do what we do every season for our our fans and for our new fans. We usually do a recap slash State of the Union, um, kind of go back to some of the topics that um, we have discussed previously in the season particularly if there are any updates or any news for us to discuss. And there's three things particularly we want to um, tackle that we have addressed earlier with updates. I want to give you our perspectives, our opinions, um, because again, we're about the sneaker business talk and on clarity over popularity. So T. Mark, Street Shark, go ahead and set us off with uh, one of the topics that uh, we went through, discussed in detail before the update, and um, some of your predictions about what the outcomes may be going for. Okay, let's dive in some more sneaker business talk. Um, so with this uh, first topic, we just want to cover Kanye West. That's kind of we're near the end of our our season here, so we want to you know kind of end where we started and give you you know and just close that loop uh, um, because a lot of ha- a lot has happened since, and some of the things that we talked about mm, they transpired. Um, um so. Just wanted to uh, give credence to, you know, when we're talking about um, ethics and business decisions from um, uh, corporate sponsors, partners, um, and how they're, you know, they react or knee-jerk react uh, um, to certain situations. And um, and depends on how they handle the damage control uh, um, is going to determine what the longevity of, of what's going on So uh, um, for, for their business. Uh, um, so with that being said, with Kanye West, we knew that they said suspended. Um, his line, um, they froze his bank accounts and, and his money, you know, just to, we we're talking about anti um, some, uh, Semitic uh, comments, but at the same time, there was some context in there uh, um, as to, you know, others, you know, we, we talked about Kyrie Irving a little bit too, but, you know, again, the context just says that, you know, there was some social backlash that poured gasoline on, on uh, some of the situation and, you um, and because of the way that the contracts were signed, like it was a, a big question mark of do you even have the authority to do this? You have so much pressure uh, um, to cut ties instantly, mm-hmm. uh, um, and, you know, instead of, you know, felt like they cut ties faster than they learned the facts uh, um, and, and, and learn and, and formulated a strategy to move forward. It was just react, wait and see, did it die down yet? Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, I'm not defending Kanye here by any means. I'm just this is business talk or uh, 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 right now, so it's, I'm on neither side. Uh, um, just stating that, uh, you know, since we talked about that and and you know the fallout, uh, Adidas has lost a lot of money um, mm-hmm. and momentum uh, um, um, with their brand and and everything else in between uh, um, because that was the anchor um, to keep Adidas uh, um, at the um, top of the tier uh, um, in the footwear game um, was the was the Yeezy brand um, and um, that's where you got all of your you know extra hype coming in um because these other collaborations we we told you in other episodes too they weren't going very well um you know the beyonce collection they're not gonna keep going with the blue with the uh ivy park um uh, you know and a couple other uh, collaborations you know pharrell and um human race and um his his brand they're just he's just doing like these earth tone palettes um, um you know what i mean and then that's kind of it now he's over louis vuitton um and doing other stuff so like you know and then unless you like bad bunny or a couple other <laughs> things in between you know we had some lackluster marvel collaborations those, those type of things so they weren't feeding anything uh, um uh substantial um for for adidas so you needed Yeezy. but um so now you you know, part of we talked about some of the legalities of the the, the silhouettes and and if they're able to like reproduce them and then take the easy name off of it, but sell it as a different name. Um, because Kanye, you know, you, you have like where's the line between the intellectual property and what you actually own? You know, like he owns the name Yeezy, so they can't use it. But the designs, even though he helped with that, like technically because of the tech specs involved, Adidas, you own that. Um, so you actually need each other. Um, so 
fast forward to where we're at today, um, in the summertime um, of 2023, you know, Kanye has gone through some, uh, you know, a big legal battle, and he won. Won. Uh, um, he won because now Adidas had to unfreeze all his money. He still owed the royalties that they tried to just cancel, um, and now they had to come up with a strategy to actually do something with all the product that they had already produced, um, you, you know, and they, at one point in time, before that settlement or, you know, that agreement, they were even considering, like, just, well, we should just incinerate it, you know, but that's not, that doesn't go with your environmentally friendly uh, 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 missions and goals. Um, So you can't just give it away. That's kind of not what you were wanting to do anyway um because it's still representing the things that you were trying to cut ties with and you're the outlet to give it away you know that you won't be able to control the aftermarket and someone else is going to profit so of course you're not going to do that uh, um and then um yeah so the other thing is pay them and figure out a new deal so this is where you're you're kind of at um and now we've started to see the trickle back of some um, bulk Le- Yeezy uh, or releases. I think it's been at least one or two of them. Uh, um, at before we were recording this this episode, um, that you know that was officially on the Adidas confirmed app. Whereas, and you know they they did they did one. It's not even Yeezy Day, but as soon as they announced that they were coming, it was like five different models, and 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 they were releasing them at random times. Um, there were some draws in there too, uh, um, but they were releasing them at, at, at every time, um, at odd times, uh, um, you know. So you got your slides, you got your mm-hmm. phone runners, and then wave runners, everything else in between. So, yeah. So before I dive in anymore, give us your take uh, um, on the Yeezy Madness, uh, um, OG. Well, the thing is, Shark, you pinpointed this in um, a previous episode in which um, there's a lot involved. And I think that race is always a factor, even when it's not a factor. And it looks like um, as things have settled down, the smoke is starting to clear and things are starting to be logical and make a whole lot more sense as opposed to just the knee jerk reactions that you usually get from the media and the public and so forth. And like you said, I'm not defending a lot of things that Kanye said. It's a lot of things I don't agree with. Um, But from a business standpoint, some of the things that were, um, I guess, that were assumed Adidas would do were just egregious because I'm like, from a legal standpoint, not only is that illegal, but it's just bad business all the way around. And when you read, a, you know, a few weeks ago where stockholders were actually upset and that made like national news, I was like, Adidas is going to have to make a move now because stockholders are saying, again, the bottom line here, we know what the guy said, we don't agree with them, but now the bottom line is taking an effect and now we're upset. So at the end of the day, um, and I'd said this um, in a previous episode where morals and, you know, ethics and all that stuff comes to a point to where when the bottom line is affected, um, things seem to clear up and you get to see what's going on. And uh, I'm happy for Kanye just from a legal standpoint that um, things are starting to go his way, rightfully so. Um, but again, I think these things have to happen. Although again, agreed in what he said and some of his comments and so forth, but um, the influence that he has, um, it's not meets the eye at all. It's legitimate. And um, once the article came out, I read it, um, I believe, in uh, the Wall Street Journal about the, about stockholders being upset with the Adidas and how much of impact um, that it did, particularly when you brought up to me like, yo, ballers, what they putting on Yeezy slides or Yeezy shoes, you know, so they may be putting on, you know, their Nikes or whatever shoes when they're balling or what have you. But all athletes, cleats or, or what have you, not having that there it's going to be a problem. And I see that it was a problem. And now we got to see what goes forth, man. But um, I'm just intrigued on, again, said this before, the forgiveness factor from the public. And unfortunately, whether you're talking about music or athletes or um, apparel, once the next design comes and it's fire, it's like all things are kind of forgiven. So I'm not saying that Kanye is going to have a moment in which um, almost like what the baby's kind of dealing with now with a hit record and so forth. But I kind of feel like over time, um, wounds are really healed. And as long as he continues to produce and not do the greatest things that he was doing or saying, which I think was just 
whatever he was doing for whatever reason that's in his mind and he feel like he was justified um but overall man i'm hoping that adidas gets on the right foot because they see how their business was just affected negatively totally gotcha yeah last thing i'll just say is really you know rhetorically i want to know you know i talked about you know i don't want to get struck by lightning here but uh, um I, i've talked about the anti-defamation league who was reportedly a strong influence on pressuring adidas mm -hmm. to make a move and cut ties saying that we're going to make business hell for you and this this, and this like to me i think that entities like that had too much power and you're not you're not protecting the greater good you're 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 protecting your own agenda um uh, i mean it may not be because i feel like how is anti-Semitism so separate from just anti-racism? I just mm -hmm. don't get how those two things aren't mutually exclusive together. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, so like, and then especially the playbook of history that says that when an African-American gets a little too much power, speaks mm -hmm. a little too much, mm -hmm. then one of the tactics is to label them as anti-Semitic. Mm -hmm. That's a playbook i didn't write that do 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 your research that really exists so that's why these things just look funny you know what i mean and now i'm just like why didn't what was the greater was standing up and saying okay make life hell for me you know or this you know which one would have lost you more money i would have bet the other side and wrote hmm. with with kanye because the legalities like who are your lawyers that, that said do that and, and and you'll be fine legally. Like who who said that? Mm -hmm. uh, you you caved, you know, and it didn't benefit anything to your brand. Uh, you had diminishing returns. Uh, um, um, you know what I'm saying. So from a you know diversity, equity, inclusion standpoint, I just question. You know, who, do you not know who your origins are? Ooh. Adidas. Where, Ooh. where where you really are from? You know, you had no problem slapping three stripes on Jesse Owens, but mm. you didn't support the cause in mm. real life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You made you was one of the people that, you know, he couldn't even pick up his medal. You know what I mean? He had to go through the, the back interests. If y'all the real brand that want to support one of the greatest athletes in the world, I don't care what time period it is, is you make sure that they are accommodated because it's 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 about them and, and there's a that's the greater good here. You know what I mean? And that will Help your bottom line, but let's just not forget who you are and where you came from. Um, uh, you know what I mean? You know, you you know, I know you're, you know, from overseas in Germany or anything like that, but you know, looks a little Americanish with mm. the tail, you know, of for conveniently forgetting um, how you got here. Um, uh, you know what I mean? So I'm just going in on, on, on that topic and say, you know, um. Hey, where y'all resellers at? <laughs> question, question marks. Y'all not jumping in and, and buying this stuff. I ain't see the, the the after sale market flooded on this stuff, which is, you know, a lot of things going on. So that's going to transition me into our next topic. And we just wanted to touch base a little bit on, you know, tax time is new taxes, new tax rules for, for the reselling marketplaces, eBay, um, StockX and anything that resells so you have those thresholds where you have to report your taxes um you don't have to you haven't done it yet you're going to do it when you file your taxes for 2023 no question but, uh, um interesting that you know it's just not bubbling uh, um you know that's just my vantage point too um i'm in and out i'm always monitoring whether i'm frequently selling something or, um, or not um, i'm doing a little bit of both now looking it's particularly at StockX and and ebay and i'm like Where's the transactions at? Where's the buyers? I don't even see the the flooded, um, you know, you just see a bunch of listings and everything like that. Mm. I don't even see that, um, 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 you know, and then some of the activity, you know, is very spotty for what's trending, uh, um, you know. So uh, I think it's correlating to, you know, what I'm seeing in the stores, too, because not everything is selling out like that. So what's what's really going on have we hit another rut is it the economy is it you know is a little bit of everything are y'all scared to you know you want to be you know that you got to actually have a real business not just say you the plug or the connect you know remember that episode uh um the plugs and connects um so like what are you now you know what i mean you're not sustainable we told you what was going to happen on the other side 
of the pandemic with the supply chain. Okay, we told you what was going to be available and not be available. Well, guess what? It's starting to warm back up again. Mm -hmm. All those other Marshalls and Rosses and all those things, they're picking up Kyrie's. They're picking up Curry's. They're picking up, you know, uh, cross trainers, uh, James Harden, Adidas. Remember when it was just Spalding at the beginning of the pandemic and and all these no-name things, uh, uh, Apex and all that good stuff? And now we're back. And y'all are ready. Uh, um, nobody, where, why y'all ain't buying? Um, um, uh, you know what I'm saying? We getting deals. They may not be always the best deals, but um, buy to sell, uh, to flip. I just, uh, it's a little dry. And I'm just wondering if there's a correlation to new tax time and the way that people may have, uh, um, you know, where, you know, where are we at? <laughs> um, that's why this is a State of the Union episode because we, we, we're calling it out. We, but we admit, you know, we're giving you clarity over the popularity, but we not we don't have all the answers. Sometimes to get to the answer, you got to ask pose the right questions first. So that's what we're doing here. No question, Shark. And Texas. with me personally, the pandemic made things from again from an optic standpoint seem so easy. And now when the screws get tightened a little bit, when we talk about tax, we talk about maybe the availability not being what it is. We talk about maybe the probability not being once you just go get a shoe and your margin once you consider all the fees and everything not being as high. What happens? Real recognized real and the folks who had it easier thought they had it easy start to go to the side a little bit. And I think a lot of that is what's going on right now. But at the same time, like you said, I'm starting to see a lot of changes. You mentioned the Marshalls and the Rosses and the TJ Maxxes, but I'm starting to see these last few weeks, Shark, some things coming in the Nike outlets now. And I know the Adidas outlet has been a little bit dry. Nike factory outlets yes, as well. You know what I mean? Definitely. They don't know them. They don't get good stuff, but they're getting them. It's starting again. So again, we've been in the game for so long. It's almost like, we know the cycles and all we have to do is be patient. And some of the items that I saw um, just for the first time going in the outlet in a long time, because it's been so dry. Why even make the attempt to even, it wasn't worth even the gas money, but I was around man and seeing um, the Jordan threes reimaged in big kid sizes, um, seeing all the undefeated air force ones. And I'm told that's in multiple outlets. And you're talking about 10 to 12 sizes, um, or ten to twelve pair in every now, the, size. The three, you're talking about the threes. Yes, the, the re, with the cement, the white yes. cement threes. Okay, you yes. mean the threes that that came out, sold out, came out again, sold out, and then like just the other day, um, popped up with the Jordan Reserve on sneakers. That, that indeed, one, indeed. Okay, so it. again, something that we discussed a season ago. You know, are these things really being quote unquote restocked, or is more being remade, which is also having an effect on the resale market and so forth. So um, it's gotten real in the field. Someone like you and I, we sit back and watch and it's all good to us, but um, you get to see who the real hustlers are these days, Shark. And it is interesting to me now how um, the streets get dried up real fast. And I would just say um, the corners are a little more emptier than they were <laughs> yeah. 12 to 16 months ago. That's that's about right, you know, and, you know, I'm just wondering what the next wave by the holiday is going to look like, because there are some crazy steals going on right now it's, mm -hmm. you know, online and in the stores. But if you're not there and you only focus on the next thing that 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 you say, is, you know, or some account that, that has, you know, now they have all these accounts that say, you know, this is going to be the resale value of this, uh, uh, you know, and people are really looking in into that stuff. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, but it's not really, you know, bird in the hand. It's only mm -hmm. worth what somebody's going to buy, not what you predict. And that's why y'all keep getting stuck with stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and guess what? These stores have these no return policies. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, many of them uh, do now uh, final sales. And then and then now what do you do? Um, mm -hmm. you know, and um, like, and another sign is that some of these new releases, the price is going, the resale price is below retail way too fast. Um, um, you know, like in the same month or the, within two or three weeks, it's below retail. It's for something that was hot that you were paying above retail before the release date. That's the sign. That's one of the signs is that if 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 the resale is is higher before it releases and then as soon as it releases, it just goes pew and then goes below retail within one month mm -hmm. or less. Yeah, yeah. 
you got to be more patient uh, 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 next time and learn, and, and learn your lesson because you should just wait it out for the sale or the next restock, whatever. Um, um, you know what I mean? Like, trust me, you we'll talk more about some of what we've acquired in a, a auto acquisition episode. But right for, for this, uh, uh, I think that some of the, you know, the new rules, uh, new marketplace may have um, impacted, the, you know, your outlook um well, you might be buying stuff and trying to sell it and then returning it in the only places that you can return stuff Um, because, you know, Nike to still let you do that. But you better be careful because Nike is looking at your account and they will flag you if you return too much stuff. Uh, and now that, but so Sharky, you won't no. be able to get stuff on sneakers if, if your Nike account has too many returns. Now that, that's Shark, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, there has been a change the past 24 months. And you returning things without a receipt either. Nike has gotten hip to that game. And even if you pay something for retail price and you try to take it back to an outlet um, or a factory store or a clearance store without a receipt, you're getting bottom barrel. And that's just to discourage people from um, doing that as well. So um, I kind of got over it. And I know you did. And a lot of other people did um, that live in urban areas because stuff would be so cheap at some of our um in-house stores, if you will, or local stores, take it back to an outlet and not in exchange it for something that I actually wanted. They even got a hip to that game now. So, um, well, I the think game that that, I think some of that is seen, in, you know, correlating to some of the things I've seen. Like they only had the same price for the same Nike. It is. It, well, I don't care if it's a factory outlet versus regular outlet. Um, it's the same product in Nike stores. Uh, um, but they're different prices mm. in the same market. Mm. Like that didn't add up to me, but that happened to me recently where I was just like, wait a second. I was just in the factory outlet. Yeah, I get that it's probably less than the factory outlet, but like I still don't get no top to the box. Um uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's still on the hash wall. So Definitely. I don't understand. And even some of the apparel where I was just like, I swore I saw this. Matter of fact, there was something I was looking for, and I was just like, Ooh, they have it over here. And I was just like, Why is it fifty nine ninety nine here? Mm. And it was thirty nine ninety nine, you know, and I was Down stuck street. There. Yeah, you know what I mean? I didn't, you know, they didn't have my size, but I was I wasn't paying the other, wasn't paying the five. Uh um, but I was just sitting there like, this doesn't make any sense. Cause half the time, you know, they price check and look at stuff in their system, which is like a universal system. Um, um you know what I mean? I was just like, ah, this is interesting. This is interesting. So um, yeah, I can just see outlets in general have been a little dry, uh, um, you know, or or they're not competitive with their neighboring retailers, you know. Mm. Like I feel like, you know, if you're at a mall and they have an outlet store, um, let's just say like Puma, all right, because this is kind of a thing. Um, why is Puma five stores down from Foot Locker, but Foot Locker has lower prices for all the Lamelo balls? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Or, you know what I mean? It's just weird. Um, mm. uh, you know what I mean? I'm just like. You're the outlet <laughs> for the brand. You got your competitor is a third party. Man, you better sell your stuff out. You probably got less than them. You know, and, and as a matter of fact, they gonna you gonna hold on your stuff longer because they I don't know if they have an account where you can send stuff back because they don't do that like they used to. Used uh, to. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So like they're gonna keep marking it down. Mm -hmm. And that means your stuff is gonna collect dust because it's gonna go from Whatever, 130, 120, and it's gonna go 99, because you know that's the flat what they always there do. There you go. There you but, go. And then depends on where what what side of town you're on, then you might get the 89, 99, 799, 79, 99. You know what I mean? Like, so you just gotta stay locked in. Uh, because even with the foot lockers, they might have different prices at different places, but um you gotta ask, uh, like we told you in the other episode about how to you know, um, get your stock numbers and go talk to somebody, and they will go get you that deal if it's in the system. But they, if if it's on the wall, they're giving you what's the tag on the wall. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? So uh, I literally gave someone the gas face at the at the, <laughs> at the Puma outlet because because they didn't put the price tag on the Lamellos, and I was like, oh yeah, well you know y'all got three different colors. Like, what's the price on them? And I'm sitting there like all happy, you know what I'm saying? I was like, man. I'm to get a deal, I'm about to pay 50, 60 bucks. Um, um, you know, retail. And this was like 99, they're all 99, 99. I was just like, boop, dude, that's not a deal. I, and then before I even thought about it, I was like, oops, I said that out loud in front of that girl face. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? And just turned my back and walked away. Like I thought nothing of it. I was just like, what? 
all right, I'm not even. <laughs> I'll go. Like, why would I do that? I can go stack a coupon at the foot locker, and, and if I, that's what I wanted to pay, and just do a little less. So definitely. Anyway, uh, um, just always just observation, you know, and I think, you know, might have something to do with some taxes and some economy and, and money, but also your fickle buying habits, um, you know what I mean? So some of your fake retailers, the plugs and the connects, mm-hmm. you're not the connect. You're mm-hmm. trying to be the plug. Mm-hmm. We ain't got no connect, Tommy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, um, so to <laughs> to wrap up uh, the trifecta uh, um, here, we, we, you know, we definitely wanted to touch on the saga that continues with Ja Morant, <laughs> um, um, you know, because that touched into some Kanye, you know, similar how businesses are treating you with the morality, with the morals and the ethics and the business decisions. But this one, you know, is a little more cut and dry. You're the re- repeat offender. You're not understanding your power of celebrity and influence that you have on the community. Um, So although he did not commit any, uh, you know, laws you know you didn't infringe on any laws you, you didn't do anything illegal but you Great know for a private entity though brother exactly so mm-hmm. you know when they say there's a code of conduct and when we talk detrimental to the team that's what we're talking about and then the fact that you got suspended uh or you you took time off you did the rehab whatever you you eight games during the regular season you issued all these apologies um for flashing the guns in the Strip club. Bro, I don't know why you need your job, Moran. You don't need any guns. Uh, okay. You know, if you want to have armed security or whatever, then pay for it and you pr- and get yourself a driver and do all other stuff, uh, um, you know, uh, to protect yourself. But why do you need to, you know, some of our culture, some of the hip hop, you know, is embraced. Uh, um, but at the same time, it's just like, you are not a thug. Stop it. Um, uh, um, you, know, you know what I mean? Or like, maybe I'm not even going to call him that, that he's trying to do that. Let me just say, you have nothing to prove to the world about how hard, you know, pause, how uh, <laughs> how gangster or, or you know, street cred. You, you don't have to prove street cred to us. You're in the NBA. We know you came up in a nice, you had a stable environment and you came up, you went to college, all that. You got a father, stuff. an active Come father. Oh, man. Like, just, just embrace what you are, you know, don't you don't have to. You ain't got ops. Your ops are Steph Curry, okay? Uh, uh, not you know somebody in the streets of Memphis, okay? Uh, uh, and as a matter of fact, you, they love that team down there. You know what I'm saying? So you're actually protected and don't know it. Like you don't have to do this stuff. Uh, um, and no one's coming for you. You know what I mean? So then the second incident, you know, if you saw the whole video, he was kind of. The weird part is they're on like a G wagon in somebody's driveway in a suburban neighborhood, but you're dancing on the car and doing all this other stuff. And then, you know, your homie is on live, which is part of the problem. Um, um, you know what I mean? You got the wrong people around you. You should have people that don't need to be validated that they know you. It's just like they, if they tell you that you're there, that, that's my boy, Josh, my boy, then so be it. But yeah, anyway. You know, so he flashes. He got caught flashing a gun to his temple, uh, um, he just mimicking a song and whatever. You know what I mean? And then that went viral. Um, and then you know his world stopped um, because now the NBA waited for the season to be over uh, to make the announcement that for next season mm-hmm. he's already suspended for twenty five games. All right, so twenty five games. You know, on the scale of whatever precedent has been happening in the past and people have done some crazy stuff and gotten, you know, a little more, a little less, um, you know what I mean? But you're in the kicker of the repeat offender. You're in the, you sat there and said you were remorseful, but your actions don't correlate that you understand the magnitude of what's happening. So they got to teach you a lesson. All right. And then, so you're going to lose all your game salary money, which is around seven, $8 million. But, you're lucky that Nike is standing by you. And I think they're only standing by you because they already produced the damn shoes. Well, Remember, it's good business too, though. It's good business. Yeah, and, I get it. Yeah, um, um, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, good business for someone that ain't going to be on the court. We've talked about that. Um, 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 you know what I'm saying? And uh, we and you got people like Michael Wilbon on national TV saying, I'm not letting my son buy these shoes. You got too many influential people. Now, they're still selling out, but I can't. 
I gotta look at the quantities that they're actually sending out to to verify mm-hmm. that. Uh, um, you know what I'm saying? But um, you know, so I'm saying they should have already been producing shoe number two right two. now. There and, you go. And and by the time the season starts, we should already see a leak of what it looks like or that's silhouette at, at at least. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's happening, and I don't think it's in Nike's best interest to move quickly on that. You know what I mean? Get rid of everything that you have. Go through the the production cycle and um, de- deployment that you had. Let's get through back to school um, because there's a lot of um, grade school exclusive colorways that are going to be coming for him because that's what your lane was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, 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 you know what I mean? So Nike sticking by you. They want to give you, you know, you're on like your third chance. You know what I mean? Like what you didn't even, you did all of this before one signature came out. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that was right after all-star where they debuted, um, you know? So yeah, just be careful because you're losing money. Um, and you've also, He's also lost leverage on his next contract because you're Definitely. in, you know, they need to give you extension and you're the new collective bargaining agreement comes, kicks in next year, buddy. Here so guess what? Mm-hmm. Millions. And you millions. are going to lose money because you won't be, you won't be eligible for the super max that you actually deserve. Sir. In order to do that, you have to hit benchmarks. And some of those benchmarks are all NBA. All right. Um, but you can't make all NBA because there's a new minimum amount of games you have to play indeed to qualify next year all right and that's part of the league strategy to say mm-hmm. for all you guys to win a rest half of the season and everything else yeah so that mm-hmm. it's for that for load management but at the same time for this punishment they knew that he wouldn't never qualify just by giving them 25 games and that's the bigger punishment is that yeah you're going to lose 7 8 million dollars in salary for next year in those 25 games but you're about to lose probably like 50 to 80 million dollars that you should be getting because of the tier of performer you are uh, but you won't be able to hit the benchmarks uh, <laughs> uh to do it and that was such a you know crafty way to punish somebody cuz it's like a residual but it's just Mm -hmm. like you got to show improve now so shark really quick i took the time because i agree with everything that you said everything that that you have said but i have to say to myself we have been there we've done that we're now in the 40 club let me get with the youngin let me get with 2021 year old and although i may not agree with his perspective just get his take so i was on a college campus and got going off about how Morant's being quote unquote done dirty. And I'm talking to this cat. And he's telling me, they has got to understand, man. You know, Morant's going to turn up. He ain't done nothing to nobody. He hurt nobody. And I'm saying to myself what I said in a previous episode, in which we are the last generation, probably next to the last generation, that had this pre and post internet social media going. And talking to him, it was just the same lack of accountability and responsibility that John Moran is doing. And I'm just like, is this a generational thing? And is the gap really that huge for me, which I'm just nothing but 43 years old, the way I'm talking to a 21 year old. And it's like, I feel like I'm the old man now when things are clear cut and you just telling me he's got to say, he's going to turn up. What's the problem? He ain't done nothing wrong. Cause he, he got in the jail, got locked up. And um, just interesting perspective from him. So I feel like that's where Jaws mindset has been. And it's outright wrong. So again, you got to get your hand slapped. How you get your hand slapped? And just talking to this young man, he was just like, he just he got it, but he didn't agree with it at all because it was nothing, quote unquote, illegal. And um, having a conversation with him, Mark, was just difficult because the mindset of this young man, I'm just like, I had to get a scope of where Morant may be, and I'm just like, this is not good at all. Yeah, it's a little generational, a little cultural, uh, um, and then just mix in with, um, you know, where we're at, you know, with social media, false sense of reality, microwave society. Um, you get to always just reinvent your image of whatever you want people to see, which is crazy. Like, if you know that, then why do you do this? Mm-hmm. It's because you want to be portrayed. You want to be like, think about why the Memphis Grizzlies barked the most that all these teams and a lot of these other veteran teams didn't like that stuff. Cause it's like, you ain't won nothing. You ain't won nothing. Why are you say, talking like this? I don't care where you're at. 
uh, um, in the regular season right now. Us veterans know that we're this is a marathon, man. Mm-hmm. Um, like, why are y'all talking so much? Um, that that was a little, you know, you know, it it crossed the line of a little arrogance. Um, um, you know what I mean? Because you you didn't do anything yet. You ain't hadn't won in the playoffs yet. Um, um, like like that. Um, um, like to, uh, and then consistently. Um, you you're like how are you talking about uh, uh you know, a rivalry with the Warriors? You got to both teams got to beat each other for it to be a rivalry. Um, 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 you know what I'm saying? And it's and regular season don't count. Um, um, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I think that, um, you know, and then what happens is, you know, whoever you talk to, they don't have John Morant money. There you go. And that we, we get you that's factored in because Thank now you. that's now your ears are closed even more. Now mm-hmm. I'm whatever I'm I'm untouchable. Stop me. I'm in the club. I'm doing this, this and this. Uh, um, you know what I'm saying? We already know that John's draft in South Carolina made uh, uh, Zion Williamson is in the news for the wrong reasons, too, uh, because he's. Doing all types of other extracurriculars, uh, but you know, and, and strippers and porn stars out here outing them, but you know what I mean? So, like, you're a little too much out there, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always say, like, where's the OG to be like, yo, dog, like, you could bring bring the club to the house, you know what I mean? Put the stripper pole in your basement, you know what I mean? And just have a controlled environment, you know, get rid of the phones. Um, 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 you know what I mean? Your boys are not allowed to go on live around you. That's just mm. the rules. Um, mm. uh, you know what I mean? The rules. If, if they don't do that, then they ain't for you anyway. All right. If they, you know, if their egos are too big to say, oh yeah, you know, he, uh, you know, you know, I know John. No, you didn't. Yeah, look, uh, you know, like that's either you you were there or you weren't. That's it. Like that's good enough. Uh, um, you know what I'm saying? But again, that's our error. You know what I mean? I seen some things that I ain't gonna repeat. Um, mm-hmm. um because I was there, and that's all that needed. To, that's it. Um, um, you know what I'm saying? So just to wrap up, uh, um, with Ja, it's just a lot of unknown. Uh, um, it's actually good that Nike is you know um holding out. I'm just saying, I think they don't have. They're not two feet standing on this hill with him you know they're doing the right moral correct thing because yeah. that's part of their brand mm-hmm. is to is for second chances and evolution and people are human beings redemption and, and, and then they redeem themselves so they're here for the redemption story because it can be very sweet yeah. um and that's kind of uh, um their uh their motto so you know i think that that's a good place for us to to wrap up we Indeed. just gave it some um business to, uh sneaker business talk some clarity over popularity just wrapping up some state of the union items from beginning middle to end of season three from yes, the soul material podcast so uh signing off for this episode it's t-bar the street shark and OGEO. peace to you peace